So mass cytometry has allowed us to do experiments that we could never do before. Because of the numbers of parameters we can now measure from individual cells, we're able to address complex questions about how different cells look, how they affect each other, how they function, uh, in ways that we could never do before. The major benefit I have for using mass cytometry for this study in AML is that I can measure as many parameters um, as possible. So I can look at cell types um, that uh, are difficult to identify with conventional flow cytometry. Um, again, the samples I use find, are, have is a, a set that I probably will never get again. So I, I'm trying to get as much information as I can out of each individual sample. Each patient sample is precious, and to get as much information as possible out of it, my cytometry is a great way to do that. You only have one shot if you have one sample, one vial that you can you can pick whatever technology you can look at with that one sample, then you want to get as much information as you can. So using mass cytometry enables you to look at more than 35 markers at a time that normally you couldn't look at with conventional flow cytometry. By, by increasing the number of parameters, by increasing the panel size, the targets that they're able to look for or, or, or that they can look for, um, you're able to ask questions about entire systems in biology rather than about specific cell types. I would like to believe that we could go uh, into clinical trials uh, with mass cytometry, where we could like literally um, picture the whole um, immune response against, for instance, a new vaccine that we are testing. So the, the future of uh, imaging mass cytometry, uh, for me very clearly, uh, is the acceleration of discovery, uh, as I mentioned before. Uh, on the other hand, it is a great tool for profiling patients and, and doing a better molecular classification in the new age of uh, personalized medicine.